Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Matt. Doherty, who you will know as Averman in the Mighty Ducks films. We're talking about a lot of cool projects, including a play that he is working on called Brothers Play. We're going to talk about all of that. Quack Attack is back. Everything always. Matt Doherty, welcome back to the show. It's so good to see you again, man. Back at you there, Petey. Uh, the, the, I think it's called the Quack Attack is is back, Jack. Jack, absolutely. So let's let's not offend Jack. Let's, uh, <laughs> or already you're going to be getting comments from all the Jacks. They're going to be, you know, slipping into your DMs and it'll all be downhill from there. It is so crazy. You know, 30 years, bro. 30 years, man. It is... I, you know, we were talking about before and you kind of stopped me and you were like, shut up. That's a good talking point for the interview. <laughs> but like, you know what? Because this, I got, everyone out there, this is, I think, the fourth time we've, we've fourth spent time, time together. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy. You're four-time guests. Like, it's it's nuts. You gotta it's go. on my Wikipedia page, actually. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> is it actually? I don't know. I made that up, dude. <laughs> No, but I was talking to you because we were talking about hockey before. Regardless if you're like a big fan of hockey or not, do you feel like obliged to be kept kind of in the loop as much as you can about hockey and NHL, knowing that you're kind of part of like the start of an NHL franchise? Does that ever come to mind? Yeah, heavy is the head that wears the crown. That's really uh, – it's it's a tremendous pressure. Uh, you know, I, I understand – I think sometimes people think I know more about hockey than I do, <laughs> even though I play it uh, and I have literally sticks like in the other room and I have mm -hmm. my gear in the uh, closet over there and I, I keep a hockey stick in my car and I watch it on TV. Uh, the game still uh, amazes me and yeah. I still don't quite get it. Yeah. I feel like I'm always playing catch up and going, but I understand the pressure of feeling like, um, but it's not a pressure. It's like, you know, it's, it's a privilege, you know I mean? I, I feel like, you know, we played an important part in helping hockey, uh, expand in know. areas where it wasn't yeah. around much. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also make it where, you know, when Disney got, involved in buying a uh, buying a franchise at the time and calling them the ducks like they made it like family friendly you know yeah. at the time you know you could see a veil of cigarette smoke in a lot of those stadiums you know and and it was uh um so i i like to think i played a, a small role in in um in that uh mm -hmm. and especially when you have like real players come up to me sometimes like i don't want to say real players like college players or like people who've played in the minor leagues or in the pros are like, man, I wouldn't play hockey without you. And I'm like, wow, that's, yeah. uh, that's kind of nuts. Well, I was telling you before I start, I mean, I feel like I say this every time. I mean, like those were the movies, man. Like those were the movies that <laughs> the Volvo had. Oh man. He, he agrees. Yeah. No, those were the movies that like I watch constantly and constantly. And like, you know, I'm a big fan of D3. I think you love, I know I'm you're a, a huge fan. fan. <laughs> I love that movie. And you Coach stand, o you stand united in in, in defense of to what a lot of people Coach think o is Ryan, the, sir. <laughs> to win Coach Orion, sir. I mean, you think about the messages about life that are contained in that film, you know. Well, dude, it's on YouTube. Like if you put like Coach Orion speech, there's like a clip. And it's right there for you if you're having a tough day. And plus, when he's on the rink and he's and he's skating with his daughter, come yeah. on, how do you not feel? No, that, but D three, right? I loved D three, man. Like, I, you love, I love how I, I always bring that up. But you love that, I love that too, right? Because that's like, where yeah. that's where my life totally, totally one hundred and eighty degree change turned because I met Jeffrey Nordling, man. That yeah. was like, we, I Jeff and Jeff and I are, are dear uh, friends and. And we were we're about to launch Brothers Play, like you mentioned. Yep. And Jeffrey is in it. And uh, he, uh, we met on the set of Duck Street, yep. and he saw me, like reading about like all these old actors and like reading plays, and he encouraged me to read something. And he's like, and I didn't know if I should go out to Hollywood, or yep. if I should go and study and go to school. And he's like, I think you're a man of the theater, and you should probably go uh, study. Yeah. And go and and then my whole life changed. Like I I went to Northwestern. 
I, I became a playwright, a screenwriter, all these things. And if you go all the way back to that moment, it's on the set of Ducks to Three, and I'm learning about, like, literally, the, like, my life. So we're doing this moment now, 30 years later, and we're doing this yeah. play, and we're trying to touch some people's lives and do something important. And, like, I get to do it with Coach Ryan. Do you think... Which is nuts. <laughs> do you think the storytelling bug, whether it's, like, playwright, whether it's actor, and even at, like, the young age, does that kind You're of... You're a storyteller, man. Abs- does it stem from just us wanting to make something? Do you think it's I as think simple so. as that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think we have... Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, like... Uh, I just well, I want to make content. Like, I want to yeah, make something. I, yeah, I think it's a part of who we are as humans. Like, I mean, I think we, we got fingerprints. We got the, these, like, 10... 20 digits, you know, I can't count much higher than that, you know, and we, we have our, you know, thumbs. And I think the fact that we can, that we tell stories yep. is what makes us human. And like, why do we go back to ducks all the time? Why do we go back to this movie for like an obvious reason? It, it does something primal in us that like makes us feel like we're all feeling like underdogs. We're all, we Did all want to feel a part of a team, you know, we all want to overcome our problems and yeah, it, I mean, it's come cr- on. And it's crazy because I think there's an interesting thing that kind of happens with, you know, the first Muddy Ducks and, and you know, we always talk about this. I mean, you're OG. You're in all three movies, which is amazing. And it's one of those things where the first one hits deep with like the life lessons and everything. The second one has those life lessons, but I think the second one really focuses on like the hockey, right? Because there's that big game. That's like what? Like 40 minutes of screen time almost. <laughs> In the pond, right? And then I love that you call it the pond, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like that was like that game is in like that whole game. You go back in the the you do your whole the whole like roll call thing, and then you come back like that. We iconic. rewrote the rules of hockey because there was two minutes for roping. Yeah, you did. I mean, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> no, but like that whole thing is like iconic. Basically, ESPN sometimes shouts it out. Says so like on this day years ago, Team USA, aka the Ducks, defeated Team Iceland at the Goodwill Junior Hockey Games. Like, it's so crazy, but it kind of stems to what you kind of said about storytelling and everything. Where like, I think we forget that the messages in the Mighty Ducks movies are like really, really important. Sometimes I truly think that. I, I'm, I, I believe that. Like, uh, I mean, who doesn't want to feel that we can overcome whatever? Yeah, I mean, who, I mean, come on. I don't know many people. I don't know many people who walk around the street going, you know, I'm not an underdog. <laughs> you know, it's like I think everybody can identify with feeling like there's something that you know they need each other, they need their team for, yeah. they need to fly together with the ducks and and overcome if and like kind of defeat. I I challenge that like if we all do the dirty and and get honest with ourselves, we all probably feel a little bit like that. Absolutely. So that's, that's that. I mean, that's. I mean, why do we watch? I mean, I don't know about you. Like, we watch. We watch sport. I'm a huge sports fan. Yeah. Who doesn't want to cheer for the team that that feels like there's no way yeah. we should do it? You know. It, it, and it's it's like the best feeling too when you watch like international. Oh, yeah. When you watch international hockey, when a team that wasn't supposed to win wins, it's like you know it feels like the cool. Like you you feel like you're you're like a fan of that country all of a sudden because it like never happens, which is amazing. And I look at, you know, you know, there's still like conventions and everything. And like, it's a bit, it was a huge part of your life as well. Is it also exciting though, to, like you said, right? In D3, you met Jeffrey Norton and everything. It like that experience allowed you to like work on other things oh, afterwards yeah. as well. Right. Is no, my, you my, always, yeah. My whole life changed because yeah. of that. I mean, I'm, yeah. my, I, uh, I, uh, I'm out here in California, um, living a life beyond my wildest dreams, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, spending the day, you know, building teams, uh, to, to make creative endeavors, just like, you know, brothers play and other things and, and, and constantly spending my, my energy and my time helping other people write their projects. You know, I consult other writers and, and I get to act every once in a while and, uh, I get to come on and do this with you. And yep. I mean, this is not the way um, this, this all happened because as a result of being a doc. And I'm going to tell you something right yeah. now. I don't know how, I don't know what, I don't know when, but I'm saying it now here on Pop Alternative. You know, I don't know in what capacity. You and I are going to definitely collab on something down the road. It's going to happen. I feel, I, I, I feel it. I feel it. I, I'm putting it out there in the universe. 
I'm I putting it out it's there. It's gonna happen. I, well, I, I mean, I, maybe you can help me tell the story of how I the, the look for redemption as I got <laughs> cut from my beer league hockey team. Okay, this is talk about an anti Mighty Duck story. I get an email from the self-appointed GM of my hockey team, who says that I have been relegated due to on ice performance that was subpar. <laughs> We was play. We play. What? We we play on the kitty rig, dude. <laughs> we play on the kitty rig. Subpar, rake. or have you, or 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 are you getting like, are you are are you? Is that is that a nice way of saying like, do you get? Are you a dirty player? Or are you? No, a clean God, no, I'm not a dirty player. I'm I'm like the opposite. I'm 45. I can't get away with that anymore, man. My, I got I got joints. I'm just I spend the whole time trying to stretch to get out there, right? You should make a campaign. Find me a new team, and like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm actively. That's why I. Actually came on the pop turn of I of course I wanted to promote the play and talk a little bit about that with you. Yeah. I wanted to talk about your feelings about coming back to 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 reality after the pandemic, all the joy you've brought people's lives while you're doing this. And yeah. but I mainly wanted to help uh, help I get help finding a new team because this guy, <laughs> this guy's a left winger. He had four goals and four assists in in, in, in seven or eight games, but um, his breakout play. <laughs> The fear got the best of him. He missed too many passes, and he didn't cut the ice. And uh, and now I'm looking for a new team. I'm so, playing yeah. a I'm playing a game for the first time in like almost two three years next week. So I don't know how that's going to go. I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. You're going to be hurting. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was one of those things where it's just like I, I've been so busy with a lot of things. I'm trying to like rent some ice just for me to skate around. Kind of like it's important. Yeah, yeah. but you, I, but the truth is you're never going to be prepared for that kind of like. You know, in like, there's no, for those of you who are listening out here who maybe aren't players and, or don't like know the, the, the good pain of hockey, like it, it's a level of exhaustion, uh, that is no, like, it's kind of like, it's, it's a little ridiculous. Well, it's it, a lot yeah. of, th- it's, it's, it's a lot. It's, absolutely. And you guys had to like full out, like, l- like learn, like, I know a lot of, a bunch of you, I don't know you, but like for the first money ducks, didn't like some of you lie and say you played hockey to get the role or something. Uh, yeah, I think all of us did. Okay. I think, I think, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the, for those, for those of you who maybe aren't, you, we've had a few actors on the show, so maybe, maybe people are know about this, but most of us who are actors, we just lie because we need a job, right? Yeah. You know, um, you know, have you ever been a doctor? Uh, can you, oh yeah, sure, sure. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, because, uh, I, until you usually get into trouble, I think they knew we were lying and that's why they set up the hockey camp and, yeah. uh. And so, um, but for me, it was the first sport that I ever like felt really, cause I was like this little guy, you know, and I, um, I had a lot of insecurity about, you know, uh, you know, I was just never really good at a sport. And so hockey for me was the first time that like, I felt like a real, like, it's kind of weird. It was like being, it was like, just like being a duck. I was like, I felt it really was like a big part of my life. I know it sounds like we made a movie about it. Yeah, but like team sports, and um, it's such a thing. It's such an important part of our lives. It is. And it's okay not to be good at it. You know, it's really okay. It is. It really is okay. I'm gonna get. I want to talk about brothers play very quickly. I want to do a quick speed round right now, an Averman speed round. So oh somebody, boy, okay, so I got it. I'm getting. We're gonna it. do okay. Um, this is the one that you might have to think. Like who gave you the San Jose Sharks jersey in the first one? Like where did that? How did that happen? The costume designer. <laughs> they just gave it. To, but like, why was it San Jose? Was it just they had it, or I think they were like they had just become. They were like the new cool franchise, and okay. uh, um, and I think the color probably the colors look really good okay. with everybody else's stuff. Yeah. Which line do you like better? Hum goalie goalie goalie. Hey goalie goalie. That one, or do you like Quack Attack is back Jack? Which oh, one do you like I hate- better? Uh, I think at home go 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 go. Even though, yeah, yeah. Everman, yeah. <laughs> it's hockey. I mean, that thing's a meme, dude. I'm a meme. <laughs> I just love the savageness of Gordon Bombay in the first movie. It is just he you has know, a lot. He has a lot to learn about himself. Yeah, that's for sure. He, you know, we have names. I'm sure you do. I bet they're good ones. So good. Yeah. I might learn. <laughs> Yeah, he he's he's fallen into the darkness of his own being and has to kind of come out of it for sure. Julie the Cat Gaffney or Greg Goldberg? If for what? For penalty kill? I mean, for for penalty <laughs> shots or for uh, all around play? I mean, I can't mess up with my my guy. I mean, no offense to Julie the Cat, I, and I love Clom, but 
I mean, Goldberg and Averman are, um, you know, you were former it, talk show host. Our strength might not be represented on but the But you were also line. former talk show host for like twenty five exactly. seconds. So I don't think you can break up that that uh, you know, that yeah. that team there. And so. very quickly, who do you think deserves to officially be the third Bash brother out of all the ducks? If there was a third Bash, oh, brother? woo, 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 Kenny, woo, man. Yeah, absolutely. My 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 friend up in the Vancouver, the Justin himself. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on, how do you not? Woo, 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 Kenny, woo. So good. I the interview I did with him uh, when Mighty Ducks Game Changer season one came out was a really cool one because he literally talked about how being in those movies were a little like I talked to him about this like sometimes I keep in touch you and him are the ones I really keep in touch with by the way from the from the ducks it's awesome and it's really cool like that first time I interview you guys we keep in touch we're all busy and everything so it's really awesome that we're able to keep in touch but he was saying like it was tough for him a little bit like being in those movies growing up like as a kid you know what oh, I mean yeah, yeah like oh, I mean I, I I can relate to that that's yeah. uh I mean you feel like you I can only speak for me, but like yeah. this whole like I didn't know if I did I feel that I fit in at home where I grew up, well at yeah, Hollywood high school, or did I fit in with these kids I went to school with who were my friend? I, we kind of had like this tiny little high school, or this, uh, and we grew up, and it was just such a, and it's just an awkward age to begin with when you're. Yeah. I mean, I was one of the older ones, but like, um, I mean, it, it's a ridiculous experience. Yeah, that you know, so I it is it is difficult. And, you uh, talked and, about the first time you came on the show, and we're going to talk about Brothers Play, which is you know a dark comedy as well. So I think it's a good segue as well. But you you talked about so, about how you had to get away from comedy. You actually like left the U.S. right and went over. Uh, do you oh yeah, that? oh yeah. When I was, uh, I think it was like a while ago. I, yeah, I lived in Sweden for yeah, a while. Yeah, Sweden. I, you were I, like, left... I need to get away, and 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 you know what? Sometimes you gotta do that. Sometimes it's hard. I mean, there are situations where you know I look at a lot of things, and it's like you know maybe want to change things. You're always doing self reflection. We did a lot of it during the pandemic as well because oh yeah, we had a lot of time to do that. But um, brothers play. There's a Kickstarter coming out that they can yep. check out and support. You wrote this dark comedy. What can you tell us about it without giving kind of too much away? Oh uh, yeah, I don't want to do a spoiler on it. Uh, so yeah, everybody can hopefully you can go to brothersplay.com and it will redirect to the Kickstarter. That's yep. brothersplay.com. Uh, but it should also just you can go to Kickstarter and go and type in World's uh, Brothers Play World Premiere and it'll go to it. So yeah, we're um, uh, it's a it's a play. Uh, it's a comedy about the long term effects of trauma, mm -hmm. sex abuse, and a lot of the things that men don't uh we don't want to talk about uh yeah and it, I think it, it, it addresses that, toxic masculinity right yeah, yeah exactly and um you know it talks about the hurts and the ways that a lot of uh, a lot of men what we see is they might act out on but it's you know it, it kind of looks at a path to healing mm -hmm. and i don't know a lot of people know this but one in six uh i don't know about canada i don't know the stats but one in six men in america are survivors of uh, of some form of sex abuse yep. as a child and that is a staggering statistic and um, so the play is just kind of, um, I'm a big believer that comedy can heal. Yep. You know, not that like punch you in the face, but there's a, there's a way when we bring out the unmentionable things and put them into the light. Yeah. You know, if, there's an old saying, if it's mentioned. The serious it's, undertones in comedy have always been there, yeah. though, if you think. And there's an, old, there's an old saying like comedy is tragedy plus time. And, yeah, and absolutely. All that. And uh, so, yeah, I, I wanted to uh, contribute to to the stories that uh, many, many men, many survivors don't feel like they just don't ever feel like they have a voice. And, uh, and so, uh, and I wanted to do it in a way that was fun because that kind of takes the power back from people who might have taken your power away and yeah. you've, uh, made a mess I, of your life. Yeah. I don't want to go into a whole different thing, but all I'm going to say is I don't, I, 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 I think, I don't think we're, like in terms of addressing toxic masculinity, I yeah. I don't think we're there. Like at all. no, we're like, we're not. I, and, like and, 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 and let me yeah yeah. And I just wanted to contribute a little bit to that conversation. But you and agree I, with me, right? Oh yeah yeah, 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 oh yeah. And I felt that the best way I can contribute to that was you know I can look at my own experiences and my own life and and uh, and learn from like you know, these ways that a lot of us feel fractured. You know, we look yeah. like we might break into many pieces. That's and, a good word to use. Yeah, yeah fractured, absolutely. And uh, and so the whole idea is to try to have like, like 
uh, you know, there, there was like a men's movement many years ago where they yeah. talk about like a man might, you know, some men, they sexualize everything. Other men, they just want to fight everything. And another, there's this victim, right? And you have these like three different energies and the idea is that they exist in all of us, you know? Yep. And uh, what our job is to do is to kind of transcend all that. Yep. And so my job as a writer was to do that and make it like fun and uh and you know scary and sad and hopefully healing and uh and we're planning a whole thing around it and um you'll give me all the link, part you'll, of life. you'll give oh, me yeah, all yeah. the links right yeah. to put it everywhere yeah Perfect. and like any any theater you know it takes a community and so uh so the fact that you're willing to like share a couple of minutes and let me kind of hey you know if anybody's got a chance to go on anytime dude anytime man you so... can drop a couple of bucks in the till it helps us get there to, to make dude, this play happen dude you've been i've been doing this since 2015 you i mean the first interview we did was a, like a while back and like you've helped me man do a lot for this platform as well and and help wow. my show too so i'm yeah, you, grateful, it's grown man, so much dude dude it's it's it still grows and it's crazy and i'm also also, you know, working on the creative stuff too. I'm developing some projects with some friends as well. And yeah, you, you like to tell stories. Yeah, it's gonna happen. We're gonna make something together. I don't know when. It's not. It, it's not that it's gonna happen. You have to say it is happening. It is happening. It's 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 that's happening. It. Yeah, that's that's a big difference, right? <laughs> it, can we talk a little bit about game changers? We can absolutely. Yeah. I I, uh, I I was thinking about how important it is. You know, we live in this time where everything's like rebooted and yep. and we have and we got a chance to go up there and Eldon put it perfectly. Fulton, Eldon, for yep. those of you who know Fulton, he's like, man, we get to do a thing about a thing based on a thing we did many years ago. Like, how crazy is that, right? Yep. And I, I was thinking about that this is their story. Yeah. You know, and uh, and this is a, we've had our story. Yep. Uh, and kind like, of a pass the torch moment almost. Yeah, and like it's about them and this time and these kids growing up, and I, uh, and I think that that's uh, that's an important thing to remember, you know. Yeah. No, absolutely, so. it is, and you know, season two is like out right now, actually. Yeah. Which is crazy. Joshua Hamel joins the cast, and um, I think it's the first time our friend Aaron Lohr has uh, done something. He's uh, he gets to make. In appearance as a bash brother man i i'm usually like in the loop about a lot of things but that caught me so off guard they kept that like, one pretty quiet <laughs> like so off guard but, you know that no that was really really cool um matt it's always a pleasure to catch up oh uh, yeah always so what what's the uh what, what what's the next for you guys what are you what is you uh do you have like every week or are you releasing yeah or? so it's just like it's it's funny because i think just how the platform has grown and changed is something you don't, and that's why it's like you could plan as much as you you know this. Like no, you no, could no, plan no, yeah, as yeah. <laughs> You could plan, make a plan, plan, and guarantee it won't go that way. Totally. But like it started <laughs> as like a podcast about like pop culture, sports, and I would just talk to the industry experts and like 2015, and then you know publicists would find our outlet and like like talk to us about you know interviewing like actors and musicians and it just kind of like evolved and like the pandemic came and we're like exploding with views because everyone's at home watching right and it's like a full out like media outlet now like pop alternative pop alternative.com like it's not like a podcast anymore it's like a full out like media like conglomerate almost so to speak and i'm trying to just make it as big as it can be you know what i mean PD the conglomerate. <laughs> He's going to the dark side. Not conglomerate. <laughs> like, like media, like wow. I wouldn't say conglomerate, like, but like me, we want to do a lot of things. We want to have like the pop alternative pictures, pop alternative TV, pop alternative publishing. It's a brand. You know what I mean? So Yeah. And what do you think? Is there a statement that like sums up the brand? Do you know what it is yet? So it, the original thing is that we cover everything. We talk about everything because pop is just alternative without the alt, right? Mm. So like we were doing like the small things and I was doing like the, the big things, right? So, mm. cause I, I, it's, it, I, I'm just like, it just blows my mind that like, I just came up with that name at the dinner table one day, like pop alternative, And like it, it's, it's what it is right now. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Oh, I love that. So it's yeah. also, and now it's growing bigger than you possibly can imagine. I know. And it keeps growing and it yeah. keeps, like, it just keeps doing it. And the goal is to do it full time. 
And you know what? Every year I get closer and closer. I so, mean, and I, I, and then you can keep having, having me on and I could be like, 10 time like guest. Your, yeah. It could be your 10 time guest. And then we'll like have balloons rain I know, from, be, the, from the would, sky. It would, as be, the, it would be crazy. We have to eventually cross paths if I ever come to LA or if it's good, it's, it's, it's gotta happen eventually. The pandemic really put, put a pin in a lot of like meetups. Eh? <laughs> yeah. But you know, what you did was provide a tremendous service and kept people from just eating Doritos for the yeah. entire we we years. had really amazing conversation. Our last interview about Game Changers was, I mean, this is one of my favorite talks we've done out of the four. I love this talk we had, but like the one, the last one we did was epic. I don't know if yeah, you remember it, was, it. It was a while ago, but like it was fun. Yeah, that was that was uh, wow. That was um, well, we were probably existentially affected by the pandemic. <laughs> You're examining, examining everything, and now, and now we're coming out the other end and going, can we just, can it just be done? Are we, are we still? I, think, I mean, can I, we just? I, I also think before we wrap up, I think we're, and I would say obsessed. I think we're interested in characters that are lost. Do you know what I mean by that? A little mm. bit, because during the pandemic. All we were doing is self-reflection because we had the time to do so. And I feel like the content where characters are going through things and they're changing things and they're lost and they don't know what the next step is and they're fighting themselves. I think it's things we're really connected to instantly because of what we dealt with as the pandemic. Do you agree with me a little bit there? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was just lost with the idea of being lost and now I like... <laughs> It's like the pop alternative, the yeah. existential podcast about I, all things pop. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the first time we ever did an interview, I had my crappy like black background. Oh, I remember and, you've you've and now I had a black shirt. And you're like, are you floating? I was like, yeah. You now black. you now have a you now have like a hype thing behind you. See, I I still I still subscribe to the early days of the pandemic. Let me put a bookshelf behind me. That's what. <laughs> Absolutely. Archie Doman on Instagram, correct? That's it. That's me because I don't know why. Let's Archie Doman. Archie I, cause, Doman. Because I, I created an Instagram account before I knew what it was, and then I should make it really difficult to find me. So it's really, that's what I do. The Quack Attack is back. Jack. This has been Pop Turnive, youtube.com slash Pop Turnive for previous episodes. Find out all the info about Matt Doherty's Play Brothers Play. All the info will be in the description and the Kickstarter as well. Until next time, this is Matt Doherty and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.